Yeah. Have you ever lost contact with someone? It was a pivotal part of your life. The uncertainty can be overwhelming. It's a bittersweet mix of hope and apprehension as you wonder if reconnecting is still possible or if it's simply too late. Years passed and throughout that time, Mark often spoke fondly of a wonderful woman named Helen. We were all set to visit Salisbury, where Mark had attended university and stayed with Helen during his studies. He reminisced about his time there working as a youth worker and school mentor while studying, and the connections he made with other musicians in the area. When we arrived in Salisbury, we called Helen, and she warmly invited us over the following morning. Helen welcomed us with open arms. It was an emotional but much needed visit. Mark had finally reconnected with Helen. Going back in time, you go around anti-clockwise, but if you want to start very ancient, you go around that way and then come forward. Okay. And it finishes in 1220 with the founding of Salisbury. So if there's anything you'd like to ask me at all, and there are drawers under some of the cases, some of which have things that are particularly angled towards children, and there are doors like these which open to show you all sorts of strange sometimes rather dramatic things yeah. inside, which again are fun for children. Ah, yeah, because you mentioned skeletons. Um, ah, yes, we'll get to all of them, there's more protein, and then there are periods when there's not so much protein isn't so accessible, mm, and you will get yeah. people to get some. Then because there is an interesting statistic that by the 1880s in London they had to reduce the permitted height for the Metropolitan Police because there weren't enough people who were tall enough to be joining. Wow. So they lowered, they lowered the height requirement. Wow. So it shows how it oscillates. Is this where stones came from? Yes, where different, um, there were different outcrops. Priscilla in South Wales is where the stones, um, the smaller stones came from for Stonehenge. Mm. So they came a long way, and they still, I don't think, finally decided how they got here, mm. whether it was by water or over land the whole way. Mm. The thing not to miss, which is easy to miss, is have you noticed this wonderful axe? Mm. It's, a, it's a jadeite axe. Again, it's um, material from the Alps area, mm. but the proportions are so beautiful. Wow. And it's an axe that's never actually been um, created for use. It must have been ceremonial because if you look at the edges, they were never sharp. Mm. So yeah. it didn't have a funky one. And this is the bronze the blue stone, which, which is... Oh. Um, what How, where is that, that one? Well, it, it's from the Stonehenge area, but Nobody, there's a strong suspicion it might have been got one of the stones, but the yeah. provenance is so weak that the way that we know that it was there, mm. we don't know exactly where because it was carted off yeah. so long. People didn't record things as accurately as we now like them recorded. Mm. So they don't know. But if you feel this, lots of people felt the top, but the side feels much rougher and you get a much better feeling for what the, what the the feeling of the stone really is yeah. on the side rather yeah. than on because human hands are good polishers. But <laughs> it was found in 1801, so it was found over 200 years ago. That actually looks a bit like the Stonehenge, but sticks instead of stones. What's it called? Stone to Wars. Salisbury is a historic city in Wiltshire, UK, known for its magnificent Salisbury Cathedral which boasts the tallest church spire in the UK and houses one of the best preserved original copies of the Magna Carta. The city offers rich medieval architecture, a bustling market square and various cultural attractions. The Salisbury Museum is located near the iconic Salisbury Cathedral and showcases a rich collection of archeology, span fine art and local history. It is renowned for its Wessex Gallery which houses prehistoric artifacts. 
The museum also features exhibits on Salisbury medieval history as well as works by notable British artists. Visitors can explore interactive displays, temporary exhibitions and learn about the region's cultural heritage through its diverse collection of historical treasures. They came from all over, you can see on this map. Look, you can see that it was, there were things all over the, the country. Some came from way up there. All of them, like, did it? Stonehenge in particular came from, from yeah. South Wales. Yeah. See what it says. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, yeah. All the way to Salisbury, yeah. which is yeah. over there. Well, that's like halfway to the college. So, yeah. Yeah. That's why it's one of the wonders of the world because yeah. people don't know how this was done. A lot of like American They're still figuring it out. Yeah. So. I wonder how they did this. Some people also believe that maybe aliens did it. I don't see aliens. Mm -hmm. I don't see The staff were incredibly knowledgeable and helpful, which is particularly important to us as we home educate and follow a world schooling approach to learning. We value having teachers everywhere we go and the staff at Salisbury Museum were well informed and engaging, allowing the children to learn so much. They didn't just share facts and timelines, they also encouraged the children to think, imagine and expand their minds, which made the experience truly enriching. Do you know what a meteorite is? Basically, it's a object that's come from outer space. Good morning, good morning. What a beautiful... It's raining. Not heavy, not heavy, but it is raining a little. And we're not letting that put us off. We're still going to Stonehenge. We're going to go to Stonehenge. The children are currently playing on this fantastic play bus that is situated in the car park area of the pub and inn that we're staying in. And so they're just playing on that for the morning and then we'll head off to Stonehenge. We have to go through Stonehenge. Stonehenge. We have to go through Salisbury because of the way that the buses work. It's quicker to get an express bus from Salisbury rather than from here. Even though we are literally 10 minutes away. About that. There is actually a walk but because it's raining we are going to get the bus I think. So we're getting prepared for that now. We've had our breakfast. We've had, our We've had our breakfast, we had a nice fruit breakfast this morning and now we're going to get ready to leave and check out. It's been lovely, we'll definitely be coming back. It's been a wonderful break away, lovely. Love Salisbury, love Dorrington, definitely coming back. This is the fun bus. Does it go all the way to the top? Yeah, and there's a slide. There's a slide? Yeah. There's, it's scary. Is it scary? Where's Benjamin in the pit? Um, yeah. so, Mommy, there's a slide into a ball pit. Mommy, I'm going to let you watch that slide. Let's see. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Are you making the woo noises? 
Get out of the way! Big Mama's coming down! Get out of the way, Benjamin! We booked and stayed in two rooms at the Stonehenge Inn near Salisbury and it turned out to be a fantastic choice. They even had a mini Stonehenge replica near the car park, adding a fun and unique touch. Alongside its comfortable rooms and welcoming atmosphere, it made for a great base while exploring the nearby sites. <laughs> Hi guys, so quick update. We're back on our journey back to Birmingham. We had to abandon our plans to go to Stonehenge because the, uh, the rain was so bad. So we didn't think it was a good day to go to Stonehenge. Bit of a shame to come to Salisbury and not get to go to Stonehenge. It's kind of one of the main um, tourist attractions of Salisbury but there's so many things to do here it's such a rich place in terms of history and um, sort of country and beauty really so we've really had a good time really enjoyed it and uh, the kids now are just relaxing we've had to shelter from the rain because it was raining terribly excuse me this one's trying to escape why are you trying to escape yes you Stop right there. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so yeah, we had to abandon a bit of the trip for that reason. Yeah. Tell them what happened. It rained and it poured and now we are <laughs> going home, basically. So uh, it was good though. Got to link up with a friend called Hamlet and we've agreed to work on projects together in the future. It was a freak, uh, you know, timing the way it happened because uh, one of our friends happened to be talking about me inside a decorating store saying, I know a rapper from, who, who, from Manchester who used to live in Salisbury. And uh, he says, oh, I know him. And then suddenly the dots connected and, you know, he gives him my number and Hamlet gives me a call. Hamlet is someone who I used to do a lot of music with when I used to live in Salisbury. So it was nice to link up with him and sort of connect and we've sort of said to each other, you know what, we need to finish some projects that we had together. So uh, that's good news. It's good that we are, uh, you know, reconnected again. I never knew how to get in contact with him. so. It must have been God's timing, you know, when things like that happen, you know, it's meant to be. So I'm really excited to work on projects with him and also just to see him again. And he doesn't really age like, uh, you know, in 15 years, he looks exactly the same. So that's incredible. Fair play to Hamlet. So um, but yeah, we are definitely going to link up and do projects in the future. So but anyway, I'll stop waffling and I will continue the next chapter in a bit.